there are five different funds that have five different sets of rules and have different sets of benefits to them. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the changes that we want to make to each one of those systems and how it will affect those people and what in the end will be the result of making these kind of decisions. First, as to the public employees and the teachers with less than 25 years of service. Now, let me tell you, the reason we focus on less than 25 years of service is because there's a body of law out there that right now, all the benefits you get for a pension fully vest, they become fully yours at 25 years of service. And so to change the, 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 the rules of the game for anybody who's now over 25 years would be like going into their bank account and stealing money from them. We're not going to do that. We made that deal with them. They've served the time to be vested. And not only do I think it wouldn't be legally permissible, I don't think it would be ethically the right thing to do. And so people above 25 years who have already vested in their system, we're going to have to pay them what we promised to pay them. But there's significant reform and change that can happen for people less than 25 years, which is really the majority of people in the system um, that we can do. So when I talk about these, these will be all these reforms are about people with less than 25 years of service. First, we have to bring the retirement age uniformly up to 65. It's less than that now. Uh, we need to bring it uniformly to 65. Second, right now, you can be eligible for early retirement after 25 years of service. We need to raise that to 30 years of service. Uh, we can no longer sustain people working for just 25 years and being eligible for early retirement. We need to raise that from 25 to 30, the same way we need to raise the retirement age, both for early retirement eligibility and for normal retirement, to 65. We need to adjust the early retirement penalty so that if you want to retire before the age of 65 and you have years of service in, you need to be penalized for leaving early because you stop paying into the system and you start pulling out of the system early. We propose to raise that to 3% per year for every year that you're below the retirement age of 65. And we also propose for these people, again, we're talking about the teachers and the other public employees, non-law enforcement, that we have a fairer way of calculating their benefits. Right now, their benefits are calculated based upon the three highest years, the three highest salary years. We want to extend that to five highest years to get a much more accurate picture. There's lots of times People look for that three years right at the end, try to get as big a salary as they possibly can. And I know you'll all be shocked in New Jersey to know that sometimes politics gets involved in that. <laughs> um, we want to extend that to five years to make it more difficult, essentially, to game the system. People have earned it, and it's an average salary, a high salary over five years, fine. But if you're trying to game the system at the end, that's something that we shouldn't permit because it hurts the people who have really earned these benefits. Now, we turn to law enforcement, police and fire retirement system and the state police retirement system. Now, I've said all along, I said during the campaign, and I still believe now, that law enforcement needs to be treated slightly differently. And the reason for that is we really don't want 65-year-old police officers running down the street trying to chase after bad people. And we don't necessarily want 65-year-old firefighters. There may be some out there who are fit and ready to go, and I don't want to denigrate any of the ones that are out there to do it. But as a rule, I, yeah, well, Stallone uses those artificial enhancers, I think. So it's not a real 65, I don't think. So we need to deal a little bit differently with law enforcement. And so our proposal on law enforcement is this. It changes, right now, if you have 25 years of service in law enforcement, you can retire regardless of age at 65% of your final salary. We believe now that if you're going to retire with 65%, we have to move that up to 30 years or 25 years. And that if you decide to go at 25 years, that you need to go down from 65% to 60%. And this is just a bow to the financial situation that we all find ourselves in. It still gives police officers the opportunity to retire at a substantial pension after a good number of years of service and allows for many of them who start their careers early in their 20s 
to be able to be eligible for retirement in their late 40s or early 50s and begin a second career and still be young enough to begin a second career to continue to support their families. Um, and again, on that we would go for a different way of calculating the benefit. Um, the average salary over the highest three years rather than just the highest year. And currently now with police officers, it's the highest year that their salary, their pension is calculated off. We would say average that over three years. Again, to make sure that there's not a quirk or an anomaly that happens at the end, which allows people to game the system and get a much higher benefit for the rest of their lives. Get an average of three years, it's a much fairer way to go about calculating it. Now, there are some things that would apply to all of the systems. Right now, all the systems have different levels of employee contribution. From the judges, who contribute only 3% of salary to their pension, to the police and fire, who contribute 8.5% of their salary, the teachers and the other public workers, who contribute 5.5% of salary to their pension, and the state police, who contribute 7.5% of their salary. What we're proposing here is that everyone contribute the same. That we bring everyone up to eight and a half percent. Now the police and fire system has been the healthiest of the systems all along in terms of its percentage of funding. And one of the reasons for that has been there has always been a significant contribution by police and fire at eight and a half percent of their salary to that pension system. Others have been contributing, as you can see, much less, three to five and a half percent. And we need to bring everybody, we believe, up to eight and a half percent. And when you start to think about the numbers, you understand that, uh, for instance, in this could say to the judges, a three percent of a hundred and sixty or so thousand dollar salary is not a lot of money to contribute, and then judges can draw a pension for a long period of time that will well outstrip whatever they contributed and whatever reasonable rate of turn we could have expected from that. Because remember something, pensions are all about numbers. They are not magic. A certain amount goes in, you invest that amount to try to make it grow, and then that money goes back out the back door. There's no magic thing that happens in between to take you know $1 and turn it into $10. There's no magic that happens there. So we have to look at these from a pure calculation perspective, which we haven't done for a long time. The other thing that we need to do is cost of living adjustments are made to these pensions and added to them every year. And the fact of the matter is that right now, the state of New Jersey, this pension system, $46 billion underwater on its way to $85 billion underwater, cannot afford to do that. You have a benefit, you should receive the benefit. These cost of living adjustments, we cannot sustain them. We can't sustain them when people are no longer making contributions into the system and we continue to increase their benefit every year for as long as they're going to live. And so our proposal also mirroring some things that have happened in places like Colorado and Minnesota and South Dakota, um, we propose eliminating the COLAs uh, until a time comes where we can, in fact, sustain some type of increased adjustment to these payments. And right now and for the foreseeable future, as you can tell from the numbers, we can't. We simply can't. Now, a couple other things we're going to do to try to make the fund more solvent and more honest. Right now, that $46 billion number is calculated based upon us assuming that each and every year, we will get a rate of return of our investments in the pension fund of eight and a quarter percent. Now, the average over the last 10 years, the average for the state over the last 10 years is a bit over 2%. So, it's time to get a little more honest. Now, last year, this past year, we had a 14% performance, positive in the fund in 2009. In 2008, we had a 14% loss in the fund. 
it will fluctuate. And so we're proposing reducing it from 8.25% to 7.5%. Now, historically, over time, we think this is a much more defensible, reachable figure over the course of when you're going to be paying these pensions out, which is, of course, 20 to 30 years of someone's retirement. And 8.25% is just too high, and what it does is it gives us a false sense of security of what we really have in the fund and what we're going to be able to sustain going forward. And we'll make a couple of other technical changes to it um, that in the short run will require the state to make higher payments into the pension fund, but in the long run will give us a more stable base to work off. These are also not easy things to do, and there'll be sure members of the legislature and others who won't like this because it's going to mean even more hard choices in terms of the money we have to spend in the state level if we have to put more into the pension system. But the time has come for us to be honest on both ends. If we're going to ask people in the system to make sacrifice, then the state has to be more honest with them in terms of what's really there. And it's got to work both ways. We also have to address and will address in our proposals to the legislature the really awful abuse of accidental disability in the pension system. Now, this is something that particularly hurts law enforcement because legitimately injured police officers and firefighters deserve if they can no longer function in their job. And we wouldn't want them to try to function if they're legitimately disabled to be able to be paid. But they know and we know that there is a growing abuse of this system of people taking disability payouts over a long period of time and perhaps aren't quite as disabled as they're leading others to believe. So we want to make sure that we have uniform standards regarding how you can earn a disability pension and make sure that those standards are legitimate ones. And I will tell you from talking to police officers in particular that many of them are particularly concerned about this because they don't want fraud going on in their system because it drains money out of the system from the legitimate folks who are putting the money in and want that money to be there for them when they're ready to retire or if they legitimately have a work cause disability that would cause them not to be able to support their family as police officers any longer. So I think we'll see significant support for this um, among the law enforcement community who are there to uphold the law, who work every day and put themselves in harm's way for us to uphold the law and keep us safe, those folks are less tolerant than anyone about fraud, even amongst their ranks. And some would say especially amongst the ranks, because it brings a certain amount of dishonor to everybody when you have some of those people doing that.